Hello everyone! Hi! So, so we are here in the middle of Paris and uh, we're going to do a video about the belly of Paris. So I'm Marie from My Pride Paris and I'm here with Lola. So bonjour Lola. Bonjour Marie. How are you? I'm very good and yourself? Yeah, I'm very good. So today it's bright, it's beautiful, it's sunny. And so we are, like I said, just in the center of Paris. Um, so can you tell us just the name of the place? Because I say the belly, but what is the real name of the place? So it's Le Halles, right? Yes, so this area is called Le Halles, the big halls of Paris. Uh, so this is actually the old food markets of Paris. I know when you look around right now, it doesn't look like that, uh, but it's because because it changed quite a lot. So today we're going to discover sort of the history of this place and also how it became this big park where we're in, in, in right now. Okay, so it used to be so a big, the biggest, largest food market in Paris. Um, now, is there a, a big food market that we know about that is in Paris or are there multiple ones? So there are, of course, multiple little markets around Paris, but the big food market, you know, that gives all the food to Paris is actually now outside of the city of Paris. It's in Rangis, which is a village just outside of Paris. Rangis, okay, so that's what can replace let's say Le Halle of what, exactly, like yeah. what before okay <laughs> um, and uh, so because we are in the center of Paris I assume there is a lot of uh, historical facts also and anecdotes so we're gonna see that also today <laughs> um, so thank you for watching and so we're gonna put our mask sometime most of the time because we are uh, of course surrounded with people when we are sitting like that we can just remove it that's why uh, we started the video like that but yeah you're gonna see us with some mask and we're gonna try things on of the web of course perfect <laughs> Um, so if you have any comments, uh, please, you know, let that on the chat. If you want to, us to eat something in particular, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not on this video, but on the next one, just tell us. Uh, also, if you are, you know, big fans of, I don't know, maybe wow. macaron or things like that, <laughs> croissant, uh, Lola is here and she's an expert, so you can ask her any questions. Okay, so um, what can we do now? Where should we start? All right, well, if you want, we can start a little bit here, just so I can tell you a few facts about this sure. beautiful area. Okay. And then we can move on to go and see some of the building that still remain from the Middle Ages. Oh yeah, that All would right. be great. And uh, um, there's also a nice little street, so we're gonna go there of after? Of course, Perfect. yes. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Okay. All right. So we're gonna put our mask now, but normally you're gonna be able to uh, hear us, right? So let's you. All right. Okay, so as I was telling you, we are now in Le Halles, which is now a very big shopping center, you know, a pretty hip place in Paris. A lot of the young people, you know, come here to just go shopping and just sit down in the grass that we have uh, around here. Uh, the reason why Le Halles is so famous still today is because this is where you have most of the metros and the trains of Paris that meets actually underneath our feet. Okay. So maybe you came from one of those trains? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I did walk today, but uh, <laughs> it's true that most of the time you you have to pass through here to Les Halles, but it's also known, known as Châtelet. Mm -hmm. So it's it's confusing because some people say it's Châtelet, some people say it's Les Halles. It's kind of a mix of two, two different places, right? So it's Châtelet Les Halles, let's say, <laughs> and, it's, and it's a big mess. And so you were tell, telling about the shopping center. So that's what we are looking at right exactly. now. Okay, so we're gonna take our cameraman with us. And, uh, <laughs> to the shopping center. <laughs> and, and we're gonna see the shopping center. So yeah, this is a pretty big uh, area here. As you can see now, it's very nice, but it was not always the case, unfortunately. What do you mean by it was not always the case? Well, that's the thing, you know, the Le Al market, there is a reason why it's not here anymore. And it's because it started being very unhygienic. Okay. And that's the reason why they decided to uh, actually destroy it uh, around the 70s to make sure that they could have something a bit more hygienic outside of Paris. That's the main reason why we don't have this market anymore. Okay, so just when was the very first market here? At, so it's All right. when so it started. It is very, very old. The original market that was put here, it was put by uh, Louis the Thix, called the Fat. You're going to understand why in a minute. And uh, he put this market here in uh, 1125, if I remember correctly. So okay. very beginning of the 12th century. Mm -hmm. And it started being called Les Halles only at the end of the 12th century when Philippe Auguste, uh, one of the kings of Paris, actually a very important king of Paris because he made quite a lot of things here. He decided to create two 
large building, the Halle, the halls, to make sure that you could have the cloth on one side and the butcher on another side. Okay. If you've ever handled meat, of course, you know, you don't want the yeah. cloth and, and the meat. And because at the time it was not just meat, you had also like uh, live animals, right? Coming oh, yeah, sometime, yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, obviously you don't want cattle next to the fine cloth and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So that's why. After that, this uh, big market, it changed a little bit at the beginning of the 1600s, exactly in 1543, when the King Francis I, which is quite famous because he's the first Renaissance king in France, he decided to transform this smaller market into something very large. You have to understand that at that time, you know, several halls were built and also they decided to build a very big wall surrounding all of Les Halles mm -hmm. to make sure, you know, that thief could not get in at night and steal anything. Okay, so all around us you had walls, right? So mm -hmm. it was all surrounding. Um, We ended with Raphael the last time. We, we did a dark side tour. Uh, you, you better watch that. It's very <laughs> cool. We, we ended not very far uh, to the cemetery Saint Innocent. And so that's just by Léal. So that the wall was probably there, right? I mean, the cemetery was outside of this wall or something. So like. The cemetery was actually part of this wall. Oh, yeah, part of it. exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the cemetery is uh, is a big part of, uh, of Les Halles also. You know, that's the place where the people that lived around Les Halles were buried. And that's the reason why also it's so important uh, in the history of okay. Les Halles. Okay. So yeah, so Leal was a pretty big uh, and important place and it actually changed quite a lot uh, at the end of the 19th century when the emperor uh, Napoleon III, you know, he decided that uh, he wanted something to be just... Um, you know, a little bit more hygienic. Uh, so he asked Balta, which was uh, an architect, to build different uh, buildings that were going to be specific for a different type of products. A little bit like in the Middle Ages, where they decided, you know, to separate the meat and the cloth. Mm -hmm. Here they decided to separate basically everything. So that meant that you had a lot of different halls uh, around this area. Okay, so it's a different location for different products. Mm -hmm, exactly. And okay. those were actually very impressive because they were not made uh, only out of stone, like old building. They were also made out of metal. That was ah. actually, you know, the first instance of architecture that was made both out of stone and out of metal. Okay. So you can maybe Google uh, Baltar, so B-A-L-T-A-R-D, uh, to see how it used to be uh, beautiful and, and around here. So we changed that in the 70s, that's yes. what you say. So we just destroyed them. Exactly, yeah. They were completely destroyed at that time. You know, Les Halles was called the All of Paris. You know, there was a giant hall right here uh, because they destroyed everything because things were not hygienic uh, enough you know obviously if you put uh, a lot of fish next to a lot of meat next to a lot of vegetables that can be rotting uh, in the uh, heat that's not very very good okay. and that's why they decided to destroy it we actually still have two of those uh, buildings that were made by Baltar one is in Japan Okay. actually okay. <laughs> and the other one is in uh, Nogent-sur-Marne which is a little city outside of Paris mm -hmm. uh, and those were kept actually just for the memory okay. they are not really used anymore and actually not as a market that's the only thing and now we have this so, this, so yes. tell us more about what we're looking at so it's there is no food really I mean it's not really for that it's, it's for different things right exactly so yeah so Les Halles that we have today as I was telling you this is a huge shopping center and it was completely rebuilt there was once a shopping center also in the 80s the first one that was made after the destruction of the first uh, Halles and after that uh, in 2016 they decided that they wanted something to be a little bit more modern mm -hmm. and that's the reason why uh, they built this shopping center they actually reused the old shopping center and they decided to put this big canopy above it yeah. to make sure you know that people could still come here when it was raining when there was a lot of sun and this way you know it's quite nice because you feel like you're shopping but not only in a shopping center you know you can be yeah, half you're outside. outside outside inside exactly yeah, I, yeah. See, I see the idea okay so yeah so you can see well uh, the uh, the structure of the canopy the roof but also uh, it's going deep uh, down you have uh, down the the, the canopy also the metro but uh, a lot of shopping uh, places uh, from uh, cultural stuff clothing things for uh, home whatever um, but do you come there I mean is it really 
chic is it not chic um, what can it's you mostly average yeah. shops you know like okay. if you want to do some shopping in Paris, exactly it's mostly big brand you know i'm not going to yeah, give the okay. names obviously like but and, you have yeah. like very okay. big brands it's not the place i would come if you want like something very specific okay uh, or very original from paris yeah. but you're, you know if you're looking for a pair of sneakers or things like that i think it's a good place to come to okay so it's not it's not like a department so like a printemps or galerie lafayette no 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 it's something so it's something more basic more if you're looking for something there yeah not very bourgeois not very no, simple, very simple, much simple stuff, simple okay, stuff. Cool. maybe yeah maybe we can just uh, go around and see a bit more of that So yeah, you also have a few restaurants, of course, because you're in France and we always need to make sure there is food around, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's why. And during Christmas time, if, if, if you guys coming in Christmas time, they also have a little Christmas market here. Mm -hmm, exactly. Nice, where you can uh, buy some artisanal product, local food, uh, try, I don't know, some nougat from the south of France or uh, even foie gras, I think they're doing that. So yeah, so if, if you ever come in Christmas time, that's cool. Too. Okay. Oh, and we can see from here, Um, yeah, we can see different buildings. We can see over there a beautiful coupole. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe we can go that way. So what is that? So this big coupole that you have right here, uh, it's actually a building that was built during the 18th century. And that is the former uh, wheat hall. So that's the place where they were storing all of the grains. Okay. Actually, that's what it was called, la Halle au Grain. And uh, so, yeah, basically, that's the place where they were storing them. But not only that's also the place where they were, um, you know, settling on the price that the grains were going to be sold ah, afterwards. So, so it was like in the, in the stock market, like exactly. they, were, they were deciding the, how much the grain was like, uh, like let's say the wheat, but, but not only probably the wheat. They had different cereals like, uh, I don't know, uh, buckwheat, for example. Exactly. Or, yeah. yeah. So they were deciding the prices uh, over there. And... Um, And the building is from, you, you say, like, uh, it's, it looks like 18 or... Yeah? Exactly, yeah, it's 1785, exactly. Okay, so just before the French Revolution. Exactly, yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's not very... I mean, we, we do have uh, some buildings that look like that. For example, the Invalides Dome or maybe the Pantheon for the people who knows a little bit Paris. Uh, but it's not very often that we have bronze buildings. So it's, it's, oh, quite, yeah. it's quite nice to see it. It is, it is, it's true. Well, that was mostly, you know, a question of making sure that everybody could see the center of the building. And actually, uh, this building is going to have a, a new history very soon. Uh, it was actually bought back by uh, Pino, which is one of the millionaires of France. Yes. And he's going to open a museum inside. Oh, really? And what type of museum? I mean, do you know already? Well, we think it's going to be mostly modern art because pino uh, collects quite a lot of modern art but to be honest he has such a huge collection we don't really know yet what's going to be inside and you think it's going to be his foundation like the louis vuitton foundation is going to be a pino foundation or for now yeah that's the name that uh ah. we think it's going to be called okay and i, so I can yeah. see uh, the, the tower here uh, i know about this tower maybe we can go just a little bit closer so you can see it well um so yeah so the tower that is just at the side can you see it well yes um this is from even before the building was made uh you had a queen called catherine de medici we told we we told about her in chenonceau video we uh, i mean she's quite a quite a character let's oh, say yes. so we are talking a lot about catherine de medici i'm sure you, you know the medici family um so we believe that she was really into astrology uh into trying to um how do you say foresee the future um to prevent uh, all the event that can happen to her family and so she was really into that and she had um a lot of astrolog uh, astrologer around her and uh, and specialist about the future and so they were ma making some magic uh rituals and stuff like that so this tower it's an astrological tower so the idea was for her and for him Um, to go all the way up, so you have stairs that are going all the way up to the tower and they could observe the stars from there and to, for, from the stars imagining, you know, what could be the future and uh, yes, she was really into that apparently but, you know, there is a kind of a black legend about her so maybe she was like a lot of 
people at the time, maybe she was interested in that. Maybe she was not into black magic, like we <laughs> pretend. We don't really know, but I like, I like the idea of you know, this legend. And what is funny is we still have it. You know, it's not in use anymore. It's only just for decoration, we can say. But just right there at the side of what's going to be the Museum of Pinot. So thank you for this information. And, uh, and right in front of me, we have one of the most beautiful church uh, of Paris. Uh, and it's not very known uh, because Notre Dame, of course, is the, is the big star. So this one, uh, so I let Lola present uh, this beautiful church to you. All right, so yeah, so this church is a church, uh, church of Saint Eustache, Saint Eustache, and uh, Saint Eustache is actually one of the uh, biggest church in Paris uh, after Notre Dame. It's actually a little bit taller uh, really? than Notre Dame. Yeah, uh, Saint Eustache is uh, 33 meters high, when Notre Dame is 29 meters high. Okay. So you see, it's winning. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. But there is no the, the two towers like Notre Dame. So no, a... that's true. Yeah, as you can see, I don't know if we can see from here, yeah, but there is only the one of them uh, that is built. Uh, Santo Stache has a bit of a complicated history in terms of uh, of building. Uh, the church, as we see it here, it was actually built uh, around the middle of the uh, 1600s. Okay. Uh, sorry, the 16th century. It was yeah. built around um, 1534, if I remember okay. correctly. Yeah. But it was finished only in 1633 okay so as you can see it took about a hundred years for it to be built yeah. and after that they redid the whole facade uh, in the middle of the 18th century as you know the 18th century is kind of a complicated century for friends yeah. so that's one of the reason you know why not everything uh, was finished okay and so um, so can you tell me, like, is it is it a church where people are still getting married, or is there still ceremony going there? Because Notre Dame is more known for tourism, but not really for. Um, I mean, we do have masses. Uh, used to have masses uh, in Notre Dame. So, what is going on here? Is it the same? Uh, so in Saint Eustache, uh, you have still uh, weddings, just uh, have still funeral, baptism, this sort of things. Uh, actually, since the fire of Notre Dame, Saint Eustache took back uh, the mantle, you know, of doing the Easter and the Christmas Mass uh, okay. for Paris. That's what happened in 2019. It was done in Saint Eustache, mm. uh, and it's also a place, you know, that is quite important because quite a lot of people uh, are uh, quite famous people, you know, came to this church. For example, maybe you've heard about. Mol of course. You know, the very well, famous... I don't know if you guys know Molière. So Molière um, is the equivalent of our Shakespeare, you know, in France, when we uh, want to think about some writer that really performed the, uh, the French language so well, we think about Molière. So drama mm -hmm. uh, writer and uh, yeah, pretty famous. So if you learn a bit of French, usually you learn at least, you of know, course. a little text of Molière. <laughs> So he, and he lived there, right? He lived exactly, there. yeah. He lived just uh, on the other side of the church and he was actually baptized uh, in ah, Saint Eustache. Okay. Should, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, so okay. yeah, another very important person who was uh, baptized in Saint Eustache was Madame de Pompadour. Okay. Maybe you've heard about them, you know, uh, about her. She was uh, one of, well, the most famous mistress of the king, uh, Louis XV. And she's responsible, you know, for a lot of the art that we have at the beginning of the 18th century. Ah, okay. So yeah, and... Uh, in terms of artists, you also have Lully, the very famous uh, French composer, uh, composer exactly. Yeah. That if you go to Versailles, there. in the beautiful gardens of Versailles, they, they put the music of Lully all the time. Mm -hmm. So, yes. yeah, <laughs> so it's pretty known, yeah. So, yeah, and, uh, and another person that was uh, buried there is Colbert, which was uh, the Minister of Finance of Louis XIV. So, yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty important church. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and um, so if you go to Montmartre uh, from the hill, you know, with the Sacré-Cœur, it's also the church that you can see pretty well from the hill. Because mm -hmm. you have Notre Dame uh, really at the end uh, when you, you see from far. But saint Eustache being in the center of Paris kind of pop up from all the rest. And so uh, and it's like you say, it's the tallest uh, of Paris. So, yeah. So if you ever come in Montmartre, you also look for saint Eustache. That's really cool. I also um, went to some concerts here. Yeah. So you have some uh, concerts and not just religious concert because that's what is happening in Paris sometimes. Uh, not only classical concert, you also have Indian music, uh, you have rock and roll sometimes, you have electro. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very modern in that way. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's a church that is yeah, having a lot of cultural events, uh, very different from uh, just, let's say, the organ. Even if oh, they, yeah. do, they do have that too. But, uh, so it's a beautiful, beautiful facade. We have two sundials 
Uh, I don't know if they're working uh, with the hour of now, but <laughs> so yeah, they're really beautiful. And all the facade was also restored a year ago or two years yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's really beautiful. It's really so. nice. Yeah, we should go. We should go inside. Definitely. Uh, so maybe inside. I don't know. We'll see how if we can talk mm -hmm. uh, like that, or if we have to be quiet, depending on if there is a, a mass going on or. Or something but it's really worth to uh, to see it from inside because you say it's from the 15th century yes but ended in the 18th um, and it's also the church that is associated really to the market exactly, so yes. um yeah so it's uh, apparently it's also people that uh paid for paying some part of the churches right how is that working is it is it normal for for paris to for parisian to pay for their churches is that something that so, is yeah. common It, it used to be something very common. It's a little bit less done now because we're a lay state. Uh, but at that time, yeah, it was totally normal for corporation, especially corporation, you know, of uh, of jobs to pay for a chapel. And usually, you know, they had a sort of festival uh, once every year. And for example, Saint Eustache is quite famous because of the charcutier. So the charcutier is the person, you know, that deal with uh, cooked meat. Yeah, the, the deli meat and the the ham, exactly, like yeah. sliced, yeah. So that's why it's uh, quite famous here. They uh, still have a chapel, which we're going to go and okay, see now. So we're going to see the chapel of the charcutier. Exactly. Like <laughs> okay. And so, um, do we know a um, little bit how they were placed, like where the butcher was or the fisherman? Do we have an idea? Because I know there is a, the street of La Rue des Poissonniers, so the, exactly, the, the fisherman yeah. street. So I just assumed that they had specific location that we, we, we know thanks to the name of the streets, right? Exactly. Yeah, the street names of Paris are quite old, as you can imagine. And a lot of them, you know, gives you an idea of um, what people used to do in those streets. So the Rue des Poissonniers is quite famous because that's where all of the fish from the north of France uh, was coming from. Okay, and so we have a Rue des Bouchers, maybe the Butcher Street. Do we have that somewhere? Maybe not. There may be. We have a fisherman. That makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna enter in the church. Um, so we're just gonna be more quiet and, and just show you how beautiful this church is. Uh, and of course, yeah, if you ever came here, tell us on the chat. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start with the left uh -huh. left side of the church and you're going to see some beautiful chapel yeah, all painted with all the stained glasses. So they are not uh, original stained glasses. You can tell that they are more modern. Mm -hmm. So do you think they were broken? Do we know that? So yes, yeah, saint Eustache suffered quite a lot during the French Revolution and a lot of the um, stained glasses that we have, they were remade during the 19th century, oh, okay. which is the case uh, for this one, for example. Um, so yeah, this one, I don't know if you can see, but it, this, it was made actually a bit later. It dates from the 20th century. It mm -hmm. said that it was given in 1943, exactly. Yeah, and oh, it, it's written charcuterie. Is that, is that the chapelle? It, that is the ah, chapelle okay. of so the charcuterie. I don't know if you can see that guy uh, just on the, on the bottom of the stained glass. You see Société de la Charcuterie Française. Um, So it's funny. So do you think it was already the chapelle of the charcuterie? Then they had to redo the stained glass. Probably, yeah. yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and is there is a little pig. Exactly. You can see the chapel of Saint Anthony yeah. with the pig next to it. So Saint Anthony, he is uh, the uh -huh, he is the uh, saint patron of the charcutier. Uh, and it's because he was put in the desert where he was tempted by the devil. And uh, the devil, you know, sent him demons, and some of them were in the form of pigs. So that's why he's often represented with a pig. And I don't know if you can see just above him, you have the emblem of the charcutier, which is a um, sort of coat of arm with a pig and three sausages just above. <laughs> So that's very funny. So we start in the church with the uh, incorporation of the charcutier. <laughs> uh, so that's cool because they're yeah, bringing food into the church. I love that. So we're going to continue just uh, that way to see a bit more. So it's very, it's very tall. And it's funny because when you're in the middle of Paris, you cannot imagine a building being that 
grand. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it is very impressive. Like when you enter Notre Dame. Exactly. So yeah, I don't know if you can see, but there are um, a lot of those little white papers everywhere. Uh, this is actually because the church is being uh, restored. Um, so yeah, as I was telling you, this church suffered quite a lot. So that's the reason why they are doing quite a lot of restoration uh, on the paintings on the side. So yeah, as you can see, some of them are uh, already finished being restored, and you can see the beauty of the stained glass uh, reflecting on them. So yeah, so the style of that uh, church, it's quite special because it is a mix between the Gothic style and the Renaissance style. Mm -hmm. As I was telling you, it was uh, totally rebuilt in the um, 1530s, which is kind of the tipping point between the Gothic style and the Renaissance style. So because of that, you have quite a lot of elements that are very, very Gothic, such as the height and also all of the uh, oh, like ceilings. But then I don't know if you can see, but at the top of the columns, you have uh, those top of column that we call the chapiteaux in French, which are made with uh, this feuille d'acanthe. And this, uh, this is a um, sort of um, sculpture that you have mostly in the Renaissance time. So that's where you have, you know, this sort of mix between the two styles in this church. Maybe we can go just across um, mm -hmm. and to see more of the, of the art on the other side. Well, it's great, great that we can show you uh, this church because uh, it's very important for Parisian, but it's not very known, um, I mean for foreigners, so it's great that we can share that with you. You have to look at the huge uh, organ also, just there on the center of the church. And so when they're doing concerts, trust me, that's impressive. <laughs> Okay, and on the side over there, I see that uh, there is a representation of the food market. Exactly. Oh, the L that we were talking about. Oh, maybe we can use the chair in front of us. <laughs> Sorry. Great, thank you. Amazing. Okay, so here, here we can see well the church represented here on the left, and uh, the the people working in the market. So exactly. So this is a, a representation from '69. So as you can see, this is actually quite recent. But this is how the market was. You know, you have this place which is bustling with activity, with people going everywhere, with um, produce being exchanged everywhere, which. Of course, it seems pretty nice like that, but you have to imagine that uh, it was a little bit complicated, you know, to keep uh, everything from for uh, being, you know, clean and yeah. making sure that you had no disease that was passing around. Because obviously, where you have a lot of food, you also have a lot of pests, yeah. such as rats. Yeah, rats. <laughs> yeah exactly. And, and that's why also we, we, you know, Paris is known for the rats with the ratatouille and all <laughs> that. But it's funny, but it's true. Like we had so much, so much rat, and and that's. That's why uh, also we had rats in the center of Paris because of the markets, they were all coming. Um, but it's funny because also during the, uh, the well funny, I don't know, but during the Middle Ages, um, I know that, so you had the cemetery, mm -hmm. but you also had um, the pilori, so mm -hmm. a place where you were uh, putting people, not in cages, but in like a tower, um, where people could uh, throw things at them. You know, you probably saw that in the Middle Ages, it was pretty common to, to have yourself, you know, hanging like that with your hand. And people just throwing things and that was right in the middle of the food market because of um, 
all the people that were trying to scam uh, other people. So when they mm -hmm. were trying to steal, could be bread, whatever bread or stuff. But what, uh, so if you were a merchant trying to um, rise your prices, for example, or or, or, f or fake uh, some of your uh, lead because you were calculating the weight of things. So if you were uh, having fake ones or stuff like that, you were um, uh, ending normally to the pilori des al. So you were hanging to that spinning tower where people were throwing things at you. So <laughs> yeah, better not uh, trying to uh, be a fraud or to scam people. Uh, maybe we can yeah, continue there. I remember seeing some art. I don't know if it's still there because it's renovating right now. But we're going to go just a little bit further. Because um, sometimes they also uh, welcome contemporary artists to do different things. Uh, could be uh, um, just sculpture or painting. I do remember we had a, a Keith Haring um, painting here that was donated to the church. Um, we'll see. We'll see if it's still here or if it's uh, renovating. But I see a lot of people uh, in this little chapel, so we'll see. So yeah, there is quite a lot of tourists in this church today. So I don't know if you recognize the style of Keith Haring, um, the man that is painting a lot of uh, little silhouettes in the on the wall of New York, uh, different cities in the uh, in, in United States. Um, so he started kind of a street artist. So it's funny, it's related to our video we did from street art. Um, so and so that's a donation to Santa Stash from Keith Haring. Just so you know, um, this so like I say, this church is welcoming concert of different type of music, also contemporary artists. Um, they also, let's say, yeah, in, in favor of uh, the gay communities. Uh, they welcoming a lot of uh, people also who have no shelter, for example. So they're really into, um, yeah, having a community around them and helping people. So that's probably why also Keith Haring was touched, you know, by Santa Stash and wanted to to give this piece of art to the church, um, thanking them, you know, for the for the work they're making. So that's also why we like Santa Stash, not just because of the architecture and the history, but also of what they're doing now. Uh, so socially for, mm -hmm. for all the people. Exactly. So that's, uh, so that's, uh, yeah. that's uh, interesting to see that right in the middle of, uh, of a church from the 15th century. <laughs> okay, is there any other specific thing or yeah. should we, yeah? Okay. So I was uh, talking to you about Colbert just earlier, the minister of Louis XIV, and he's actually buried right here. Okay, so, so yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting because Colbert is a, I mean, if I'm not wrong, that's also quite a, um, a debate right now. I mean, a lot of people are uh, considering that Colbert was um, uh, pro-slavery, if I'm right. Yes. And so, but because Colbert is such a big name, so we have a lot of high school named after him, a lot of streets of friends named after him. So it's kind of a debate now. Should we rename those streets, rename those high school, knowing that Colbert was not you know, very modern thinking man, or do we have to replace him in his context? And so it's it's a debate. So we still, uh, we don't know exactly what should we do with Colbert, but uh, this statue is, uh, is interesting because we still have him here. Exactly. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see with the next year to come. Another thing I want to show you is this beautiful chapel, which is the Chapel of the Virgin Mary. Um, the reason why I found this chapel interesting is because uh, it was built during the 19th century. As I was telling you, Notre Dame, um, saint eustache was destroyed quite a lot during the uh, revolution, and that's why they had to completely redo it. Now, this chapel, the reason why it's so interesting is actually because it was integrated uh, in 1804 by the Pope P the Seventh, mm -hmm. and you may have heard about P the Seventh because the reason why he was in Paris at that time was because of the coronation of Napoleon. Oh. He's the Pope that is represented. The famous, 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you remember, guys, if you ever come in the Louvre, there is this massive, massive painting of Napoleon during his coronation. So he's, he's about to put the crown on his own head. But you do have the Pope that is behind him, mm -hmm. and that's Peter VII. Exactly, yes. That's the coronation of, uh, the, of the Empress um, Josephine. Mm -hmm. And that is the place where you have the, the Pope. And so this is... Uh, one of the chapel that he inaugurated while he was uh, in Paris. Ah, okay, so he didn't put the crown on that point <laughs> head, but he did come here to uh, to to validate and to exactly, uh, yeah. To bless this place. Okay. Maybe we should, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Okay. So with all the charcuterie and uh, and all of that, it kind of uh, you know make me feel like you know we should see more food now, because we talk about the food market, but we didn't see any food yet. So yeah, let's do that. Okay. Exactly. Okay, so I hope you like Saint Eustache Church and yeah, come back whenever you come in Paris. I'll let you the mic. Thank you. All right, so we're going out of Saint Eustache now. Merci. All right. We're very blessed today to have such a beautiful day. Okay, so yeah, as I was telling you now, we're going to go to a street uh, which is quite famous for its food. This is the street of Mont Orgueil, and it's just next to uh, Les Halles, which is, of course, there's a reason why there is so much food in this street and it's next to Leal. This was basically the street, you know, where a lot of vendors uh, were going to sell their food and also where you had a lot of restaurants that were selling the food that they were uh, taking at Leal. And I see the name, uh, so you had Montorgueil, so that's where we're going to go. Just at the side of Montorgueil, you have a rue Montmartre. It's a bit confusing because we're not quite close to Montmartre Hill, to the Sacré-Cœur. Um, it's just because this street was leading to it, but from the center of Paris. So it's kind of more like a direction. So I know sometimes people say, oh, Rue Montmartre, that's weird, because it's not in Montmartre. Mm -hmm. So just for you guys who not, to not be confused, so you have Rue Montmartre and Rue Montorgueil. Exactly, but we're going yes. to Rue Montorgueil. So it's uh, the Mount of the Pride. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> the reason why it's called that way is very funny. Actually, you're going to see the street is going very slightly up but very, very slightly. And maybe you noticed that, but in France, uh, well, actually in Paris, anything that is going slightly up is called mount or mountain or something like that. But this one, it's so slight that you can't even see it. Look at the street. So that's why we call it the Mount Pride because basically it's just the pride of the inhabitants, you know, that say that it's a mount. Yeah. And yeah, that's you it. You don't, see, you don't see that it's a mount. Of course not. <laughs> okay, but it's great. It's very lively. Um, so it's true that uh, after after the COVID, uh, there is this special law, law that came in Paris that they extend the terraces. So you will see the chairs and tables everywhere. It's just because now the um, the the politic, let's say, of the city is to let all the restaurants really enjoy the terraces, just just expand all over. So it's great because you feel like uh, everyone is just living in the street now. So it's, exactly, it's really yeah. cool. But in this street is always kind of the case, but I'm just thinking, yeah. So yeah. Ooh, that looks good. <laughs> what do we have here? I see you have a good eye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So um, one of the places I wanted to show you is this place here. It's called Odette. Uh, Odette is quite famous. They have about two stores uh, in Paris and they are specialized in making shoe. So a shoe is a cream puff. And those shoe here, I think they're quite special because as you can see, they have quite a lot of uh, different tastes uh, around here. They actually change their taste uh, according to the season. So if you come, for example, in winter, you're going to have, uh, you know, more wintry fruits. But if you come in summer, you're going to have a lot of different, uh, more summery fruits. So that's why I think it's so interesting to come here. Now, actually, those cream puff, uh, we have them in France since uh, the 1500s. They were actually brought back to France by the Queen Catherine of Medici that you talked about mm -hmm. already. Um, her pastry chef, you know, he invented them. His name was Popellini. Mm -hmm. And he had a bit of trouble, you know, with uh, the ovens in France. So he let his dough in the oven a little bit too long. And instead of just cooking, it actually puffed. And that's how the puff pastry was invented. Okay. 
So today it's used in a lot of things, you know, for those cream puff here, but also, for example, for the éclair au chocolat, you know, the chocolate éclair. And another thing that you have are those things. So as you can see, it's called... You have one here too. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, you have a pretty one at the back. Bonjour. <laughs> Which is called la pièce montée. So the pièce montée, it's actually the traditional wedding cake uh, in France. Uh, and this dates back to the 19th century. So as you can see, we we're very good with traditions in yeah, France. So, so la pièce montée, so la pièce montée is like, is like you just like put one piece on top of another, right? Mm -hmm, la pièce exactly. montée. So that's uh, that's why. Okay. So yeah. So this is um, basically you know a, a croque en bouche, which is uh, put together you know with caramel to make sure that uh, you have something you know that is going very very tall. Should I take one? I mean, okay. you know, I would not say no. Okay. <laughs> So which which ones are your favorites? Oh, okay. So there's a bonjour. bonjour. One of my favorites is the praliné. Okay. Uh, the praliné is basically hazelnuts uh, that are cooked in caramel and then mixed together. So that makes this amazing paste. Uh, another one, obviously, is the pistachio, which is always very good and i really like their uh fruit des bois which is you know like red berries and this sort of things um which i think is interesting also because uh it's made with fresh fruits and i think you know fresh fruit is always a good idea all right so yeah as you can see you have uh several things you can take either just one or even boxes which i think is very cool you know when you're going to a party because that means that you can take uh a few different taste and this way you know people can eat different things all together so yeah all right Ooh. thank you so much look how pretty it is all right let me just remove my mask mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Like wow, I this is delicious. I took, I took one for the cameraman as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what did you take for Alex? <laughs> so this is a chocolate one mm -hmm. because yeah, classical and good. So that will be for you for later. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm gonna put by my mask. We can actually take it off just to eat something. Yeah, we better, we, we better eat all the time then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like this idea. So here you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you gotta feed your cameraman. <laughs> All right, so yeah, as you can see, this is a, a pretty nice street. It's, it's very quiet, um, which is why it's, it's actually so interesting uh, to come to this area because you have, you know, lots of people that come here just to get a drink or that come here, you know, to eat something. And that's why I think it's so interesting because you have Le Al just next door. You have so many, um, you know, metros and trains and even if you're outside of Paris, from outside of Paris, you can just pop into Le Al, get something delicious to eat and then go back home without any problems yeah because the train so um so we are right in the middle of, uh, of paris and all the trains of all the banlieues uh, all the suburbs they are arriving here exactly they are yeah. arriving in the middle of paris um i see that it's not just about eating it's also about cooking here exactly uh, we have yeah. also some specific exactly so yeah so of course uh you know, because Les Halles was here, the market, I mean, you had a lot of uh, restaurants, you know, that came here to buy their, uh, what we call, matière première, you know, the first matter, the thing that they were going to uh, use to make uh, the food. And that means that a lot of uh, cooking, uh, cookware store decided to settle here to make sure that, well, they could also uh, sell to those uh, restaurant mm -hmm. owners. So here, this one is quite specific for pastries. So if you really, really enjoy pastries, it's a pretty good place to come to they have a lot of those molds you know that allow you to do very very like very things. Cakes exactly. and things like that right yeah, yeah yeah i don't know if we have one here but i know yeah they do actually come a little bit closer you can see it at the very top they have a Eiffel tower mold i think this one is for chocolate though it's not for cake but you know if you're feeling interested you can do something a little bit different <laughs> 
But there is another one, but I don't know if, we, if it's, it's, it's in the neighborhood, but it's not quite close to the street. Um, so what is the name of the, the big one, the one that is known for all mm -hmm. the cooks? And, yeah. So the one that I prefer uh, personally is called Dilrin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very famous. It's been here since 1823, if I remember correctly. It's just on the other side of saint eustache So if you come to saint eustache you can go there. And I really like it because uh, they have very good quality products. For example, uh, they made all of the... Um, pots and pans for the Titanic just yeah. a small example and That's also uh, you know you had quite a lot of very important cook uh, that, that came here for example Julia Child she bought all of her cookware in Dillerin so you know it's good uh, quality <laughs> yeah, you have to watch this movie and Julie and Julia about Julia <laughs> that's a really cool one so we are right in the front of La Durée so it's not it's not the first one because it now they have multiple one. ones right um, so we talked about the macaron last time uh, on our previous food uh, video here we have more than just macaron we also have some pastries here uh, like the of course the lemon tarts that is quite classical here and the raspberry here but also a little religious and we are back to the shoe here i mean that's mm -hmm. the same same uh, type of things right two shoe one on the top of the other so yeah so the religious exactly as you say it's two shoe one on top of another uh, this one is made with uh, honey and almond but the original uh, religious it was made with chocolate which make it look like you have actually a nun in front of you you know with like a, a robe and that's why it was called the religious another thing that you have is that here they also make what we call uh, the viennoiserie which is all of the croissants we call them viennoiserie because they come from the city of vienna in uh, austria so as you can see, you have the normal croissant right here, but you also have some fancy one. Uh, I think it's walnut on top. Um, and yeah, I think it's quite interesting. And I feel like they also do waffle and ice cream here. So really, you know, you can really take different things around here. So, but now, well, of course, La Durée is known now in US, it's known in Japan, it's known everywhere. So, um, so yeah, La Durée is always a good idea. You have also other people that are making exactly. great macarons, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Pierre Hermé Et and Dillerin. stuff like that. But um, you told me that we're going to see a great pastry shop just a little bit oh, further. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to keep uh, our yeah, appetite, a bit for of appetite over there. For later. <laughs> okay, I see. But yeah, you can see in this street a little bit of everything: restaurants, uh, your specialty of chocolat. Oh yeah, the chocolat. So it's um, so whatever you're looking for could be deli meat or pastry. It's uh, it's all it's all here. It's all in this street. That's pretty cool. Okay. Oh, and I see something fun also. Oh, so we're yeah. gonna approach. Um, yeah. Oh, la fabrique à cookies also. All right. So yeah. So I'm going to take you to uh, shop. Oh, sorry. There's a little bit of noise because of course we're in Paris, there is uh, a lot of construction work everywhere. But yeah, I want to show you a restaurant that I like uh, quite a lot. It's called L'Escargot de Montorgueil, uh, which is literally the snail from Montorgueil. And as you can see, you can definitely tell that this is a store uh, where you're going to buy a snail because, well, yeah, we they're there, right? literally selling everything. So yeah, so this store, uh, so this restaurant, sorry, it was created in 1832. Uh, so it's been there for quite a while. And here, of course, you can eat snails, which is big French specialty, but you can also eat frog's legs, just in case, you know, you're feeling extra adventurous when you come to Paris. <laughs> cool. Okay, so a restaurant that is specialized in escargot. Okay, what do you feel about escargot? Can we be honest here? Because, okay, we also, maybe we can go just a little bit. Yeah, because there is a lot of people coming here. Um, so we always say to the people coming here, oh, you should try an escargot, it's so French. Okay, let's be honest. So what do you think really about escargot? Do you like them? Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, we have a French girl that say yes, she likes them. Very, very much. Okay. Well, basically when you eat the escargot, what uh, you enjoy is not the escargot itself, which is, you know, a little bit squishy, yeah. but it's actually very much uh, the um, butter that is put, the sauce. It's a butter that is made with garlic and parsley inside, and it's absolutely delicious. Basically, you eat escargot just for that butter. <laughs> okay, so it's mostly for the, for the, for the fat. So, okay. Mm -hmm, yes. Okay, but here I suppose they do different type of snails, not just uh, the classical, but maybe different ones. Um, so yeah, but it's it's funny. I never tried that place, so I always you know come back here and, and see it, but I never actually went there. Uh, we just passed a street called Mot Conseil, which means uh, the bad advice, and it's funny because in this 
place in Les Halles. It's also known for all, like I say, all the, all the, um, the scams, all the fraud. Uh, I know that not far from here, we also had the Miracle Court, like Cour des Miracles, where it was, uh, yeah, all the, all the, the tiny, you mm -hmm. know, st steel, oh, yes, well, any, any type of thief, any type of, um, of people, yeah, sprocks and stuff like that. So they were all having kind of a court, so living all together as a group with a chief called the king, uh, the king of Lethune, so the, the king of the money. And so they were not far from here. So all around here, all around Les Halles, it was known for a long time for uh, yeah, the, bad, the, the bad advices, the, uh, the people that is, are taking your money out of your, of, your, uh, uh, oh, of your pockets. You also had a lot of prostitution in this neighborhood. So some of the names stayed uh, like that. So yeah, so we're going that way? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we continue cross. that way. So Rue Étienne Marcel, which is the name of one of the first Meyer or Prévost des Marchands, uh, what we say. But basically, yeah, Étienne Marcel. So it's a, it's a long street going to uh, that way, not far from the Louvre, from Palais Royal. If you're looking at the video Palais Royal uh, with, the, uh, with Bertrand and Florent, you can uh, see more of this neighborhood over there. And if you go more on that side, it's Le Marais. But now we're going to continue uh, on Rue Montorgueil. And now it's pedestrian, isn't it? Yeah. Like this, this place it's is... It's technically pedestrian. There is only the... Uh, so yeah, you ha it's mostly pedestrian. You have only a few trucks there, which are made for deliveries. So you do have to be careful when you come here, but it's very nice because you can walk around and it's, it's very pretty. It's, it's very nice. Okay. It's, it feels like we're not in the middle of Paris. It feels like we are somewhere else in a mm -hmm. tiny village somewhere else so it's, it's great exactly so yeah that's why it's so nice about uh, this little street and as you can see also you have those cute little cobblestones uh, in this street which I think make it even uh, prettier so yeah actually there is a another shop I want to show you and it's not any shop it's actually the oldest bakery of Paris so you know we're going to eat in a pretty historical building right now okay. So yeah, it's just a little bit further away. As you can see, there is quite a lot of, uh, of people in that street. This is a place where people come all the time uh, during the week, during the weekend, anytime. It's always, it's always like that, right? It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not just, I mean, uh, um, it's always like that, lunchtime and, and at night. Uh, it's uh, just, just in case you're, uh, you can't have pastries like the normal ones because you're allergic, if you're gluten-free, if you're lactose intolerant, so things like that. Just know that in this neighborhood you also have a lot of places that oh, can yeah. offer different uh, type of products. Uh, you have vegan uh, cakes, for example, just there. Uh, so yes, yeah, you have a lot of different things. So if you come here, you can eat literally everything oh, yeah. and, uh, and have pleasure with you know, any type of food around here. So this is the place? This is the place. Great. Let's go. All right. So yeah, I think you can see already that it's quite amazing. All right. So this is Storer. Storer, I don't know if you can see above, uh, but it was actually founded in 1730. So it makes it a very, very old st shop. Uh, it was started by uh, Nicolas Storer, who was actually the pastry chef of the Queen Marie Leginska. Marie Leginska, she was the wife of Louis XV. Okay. Uh, obviously, when he came with her, uh, there was already a pastry chef in Versailles. So he decided to open his own store. And that's what made him so famous. Um, a thing, another thing that made him famous is actually a pastry that he invented, which is called the Baba Orum. Have you ever tried it? Uh, I did try it. It's uh, yeah, it depends on the places. Sometimes oh, yeah. it's great. So I don't know if you guys know about the Baba Orum. So on the Rum Baba, I'm sure you do. Uh, it's it's not very fashion anymore. I mean, it used to be much yeah. more. <laughs> let's say our parent generation. But it's true that like now we don't see that very often in restaurants. So if you like Baba Orum, old-fashioned way. This is a good place. Exactly. So yeah, it was invented by Storer. So the Baba Orum, it's actually um, a brioche, you know, one of those little cake mm -hmm. that started becoming a little bit too stale. So they could not be eaten that way. And so Storer decided to put it in a wine from Malaga, which was a little bit sweet, to basically drench it with the alcohol to make sure that it was eatable once again. And at that time, you know, the book, The Thousand Nights, had just uh, reached Europe. So people were 
big fan of Alibaba uh, and that's why it was called the Baba and afterward they decided to replace the wine from Malaga by rum which was also very much in fashion at that time and that's how we got the Baba au rum but at first it was wine at first exactly was, yeah but was it like wine uh, like like cook wine like Porto kind of wine a little bit yeah very sweet to make sure yeah it was a more a dessert wine not something you know you would get uh, with meat for example okay So yeah, uh, yeah, okay. because the inside of the store is quite special. It was remade during the 19th century by Paul Baudry, who's the one who um, decorated the grand foyer of the Opera House of Paris. Bonjour. Okay. All right. So I'll just I'll just ask if we could you know like film the inside because it's so beautiful and they say okay so yeah it's really enjoy it's so magnificent so the, the boutique itself is is, is is very old as well I it mean, is yeah yeah so yeah another thing that you have is another of those pièces montées this one is actually made with chocolate éclair so it makes it quite exceptional it's, it's old chocolate éclair here mm -hmm. wow it's chocolate and coffee éclair that's that's really hard to say. So, oh yeah we can see okay so then we're gonna see the Chocolat is that, is that their speciality? Uh, so it's not one of their speciality, but they, they're basically specialists in everything, if you ask me, because I love everything that they do. So yeah, you have old school tartatin, as you can see. So you have the Baba Rum that I was telling you about. This is the Paris Brest. So here, the Baba. And that's the Baba for multiple people, right? Yeah. So like you have a big Baba here. <laughs> And you have beautiful uh, chocolate éclair as well. Okay, should we take one? Yeah, yeah. All right, they also make beautiful uh, macarons, as you can see, amazing chocolates. So yeah, and even just the store itself is, is absolutely gorgeous. So yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, they are very pretty. <laughs> so the, the calisson, so um, well, maybe I'll let you, uh, yeah, yes. getting the éclair. So the, the calisson, that's a speciality. So you see, it's um, it's so it's in the shape of um, kind of an almond, and it's covered with sugar. And inside, you have a bit of um, uh, almond powder with um, what, uh, not watermelon, uh, cantaloupe. Uh, so it's a different. Uh, different things mixed with this little sugar on the top. This is a speciality from the south of France. And uh, you can see that in Paris, but let's say if you go to the south of France, in Aix, for example, or in Nice, you will see that a lot. And uh, this speciality, it just means um, it's in old French, uh, in an old um, uh, south of France, we say calisson for saying it's a, it's a cuddle. So when you buy one of those, it's actually you're buying a little cuddle. So that's cute. And uh, that's also like a very, very long tradition. So the calisson, the nougat, uh, also the, the um, salted butter caramel that are exposed here. Uh, you can see that here. So we, we did try one on the um, latest video in the, in the, with Lola in Saint-Germain with uh, Henri Leroux. But yeah, it's also a speciality you can find in Paris a lot. So, okay, you found a beautiful chocolate like that we have to eat it outside um, because here it's can become very crowded in a minute so here merci beaucoup oh they even put a little sign here exactly, to explain yeah. how historical the thing is right so that's cool so yeah all right So one of the big sign that you're in a very good bakery is that they have their monogrammed uh, little boxes which yeah, is absolutely beautiful. gorgeous even the little napkin that goes with it which i love up and now i'm going to try to open it without making a mess <laughs> which is you know oh a bit it's of a so beautiful itself. look at that guy it's so beautiful all right magnificent so okay. the thing that i love about this place is that um They're, everything that they do is completely homemade. Uh, they do everything on site as well, which I found absolutely amazing. And actually their chef, uh, he's quite young. Uh, I think he's in his 30s or something like that. And um, I don't know if you guys have Instagram, but his name is Jeffrey Kain. And he, How do you spell it? Uh, it's uh, Jeffrey, like Jeff Jeffrey. Yeah, Jeffrey. And C-A-G-N-E-S, I think. Okay. 
guys if you want to follow the guy. So yeah, you can. Sh he shows a lot of the process about how he makes those beautiful things. So if you guys are interested in pastry making, it's a good place to go to. Okay. All right. Okay. Should we should we save that for for later or should we have a, a little bite? What do you think? I think we should have a bite. Okay. We yeah, should have a, have a bite. Do okay. you mind holding yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. You know me. I have. So. The éclair au chocolat is the same thing. Like it used to be in fashion, then for now, for a long time we kind of forget about it. And now there is a lot of uh, people are coming back with them. Uh, especially there is one guy that is only doing éclair. Exactly. Yes. Uh, and uh, so they have several boutiques in Paris. So different type of éclair, éclair with uh, I don't know like a raspberry lychee, uh, from things that are different. But let's say the original, yeah, it's it's the chocolat chocolat éclair. There you go. All right. So yeah. So the actually the chocolate éclair. Uh, it used to have a different name. It used to be called the Duchess uh, bread. Uh, but in the 19th century, it was transformed by. Oh, merci beaucoup. I'm taking the one with a piece of chocolate on top. <laughs> uh, it was transformed by a pastry chef called Antonin Carême. He's basically the one that completely revolutionized uh, pastries, and he's one of the person that helped invent the poche à douille. You know, the piping bag, and that's the reason why we have those beautiful éclairs. And the reason why we call it. Éclair Claire is because of its shape. You can hold it and you can eat it while you're walking. Oh. And this way you eat it, you know, in a flash, just like an éclair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. So the, the word éclair, so that's coming from the fact that we can eat it quickly. Mm. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> it is very good, guys. <laughs> mm. And you can do it quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's really good. Because inside, it's not... Um, I mean, you can see, I don't know if you saw a little bit, but it's kind of a um, cream, like a ganache, mm -hmm. but it's not too sweet. You know, it's not too sugary. It's, um, yeah, it's well done, well balanced. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that's why I like Sorry, which <laughs> horror is that um, they do a lot of pastries and of course there is sugar because it's pastries. But they try to use mostly uh, very good first ingredients. For example, their chocolate is very, very good quality, which is the reason why they don't have to put that much sugar in it. You know, the taste don't come doesn't come from the sugar; it comes from the chocolate, and that's why I think it's so interesting. Okay. Well, thank you for, so much for this little treat huh, of Storer. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna continue. Is there a? Oh yeah, there's a. I think I think you wanted to show that, mm -hmm. right? There is a very nice cafe over there, so I'm going to put my mask on again. But thank you for the éclair. <laughs> mm, all right, yes. So yeah, as I was telling you, this place has been famous for restaurant for quite a while. We already saw the Escargot Montmartre, mm -hmm. which is quite old. But another um, restaurant that I quite like is just at this corner, and it's called Le Rocher de Cancale, the Rock of Cancale. So I'm just going to wait until we're in front to tell you uh, a little bit more about it so yeah as you can see you also have amazing fresh uh, products in Montargue you have very beautiful fruits so yeah right now the it's the season of the figs and as you can see here they have some pretty amazing ones all right Okay, so right here you have the restaurant Le Rocher de Cancale. It's a very old restaurant. Uh, if I remember correctly, it dates from the middle of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the architecture is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why it's so famous is actually thanks to Balzac, you know, the French writer. Mm -hmm. Uh, he used to come here quite a lot. He loved eating in that place. And actually, in a lot of his book, uh, this place is mentioned. You know, a lot of his yeah. character yeah. come to eat in this place. Ah. So yeah, so it's called Le Rocher de Cancale, the rock from Cancale. The reason uh, is actually because they sell a lot of oyster here. Cancale is actually a little uh, city in Brittany. And it's very famous for its very, very good oysters. Okay, so is it still the case? You can still have good oysters here? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's definitely one of the things. I don't know if you have it right now. I don't maybe, maybe see it's not the Maybe season, it's not in the season, not, not, yeah. Not yet. So, okay, so it's great. So if you want to also be inspired so do you think he was writing here as well or 
I mean, we can only guess, but yeah, probably. Okay, well, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I love the uh, architecture, like you say, it's very different. It's very Marie Antoinette, oh, I would yeah. say, <laughs> no? It's uh, I mean, this blue and the gold. I mean, everything is so cute. Yeah, it's really cool. And the Rock of Conca, because of the, the wall, right? I mean, exactly, the... yeah. We're going to go around and you're going to see there is a, a part of the, of the wall that looks like it's a rock, actually. I don't know if you can see, uh, it's leaning a little bit. You have to remember that here uh, we're in a place where you used to have, uh, you know, it's a place from the Middle Ages. So a lot of those houses, um, they're actually not straight. We call them belly houses because it looks like, you know, their belly is popping out. All right, so if you want, we can continue a little bit in this street and I want to take you to one last place with I like. <laughs> yeah, we're having a, a few cars uh, here, as, you, as I was telling you, you know, it's mostly pedestrians, but there are still a few cars uh, coming around here. So yeah, but if you want to go to places, you know, that are a little bit quieter, you can go to uh, just the little side streets of the Rue Montargueil, where you're going to find, you know, those pretty amazing uh, little restaurant uh, as well for example you have uh, stony clove bakery which is well might not be you know as uh, impressive for our american friends because it's mostly uh, cupcakes and cookies but it's absolutely amazing so you know it's it's a little bit different we're not doing only french pastries <laughs> So just uh, for, for the people who are wondering where we are, so it's the second district, uh, it's uh, arrondissement, so the deuxième. Um, those streets, so you have Montmartre and Montorgueil, and then you have all those little streets going on the side. It's almost all pedestrian, like she said, sometimes you have a car, but it's very, so it's very quiet. Um, so it's great to discover if you ever come around here, just getting lost around here, it's fun. You, because yeah, a lot of restaurants, a lot of uh, cakes to try, a lot of teas, coffee. You have really good things. Um, is there, I don't know, a, a typical French bistro, so the Rocher de Cancale, is there another one that uh, you think about around here? Because I know there is a lot of Thai, Italian. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, do you have any other address? Maybe Frenchy? Well, you have, yeah, one of my favorite restaurants uh, a little bit further down the street is called uh, Frenchy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually a very good restaurant. They have one Michelin star now. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, Gregory Marshall, which is the chef, is quite famous. They have this amazing uh, uh, buttermilk bu fried chicken which they sometimes serve with caviar so if you want to feel extra fancy that's a place to go otherwise they also have uh, next to it another restaurant called Frenchy to go which is slightly smaller and you can have you know like some of their we'll go away. exactly like, yeah take away this go. sort of things yeah. so yeah, it's quite interesting um, so yeah and otherwise the good thing that you can do in the Rue Montargue is just you know buy a bit of bread buy a bit of cheese and just Basically, help yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. It's so quiet. I mean, it's very, it's very quiet. So it's um, like I say, it was the place where the uh, Miracle Court uh, mm -hmm. used to be. Um, so it was really a, a way for people to to hide little street, and it's still the case. You can feel like it's still very, uh, uh, very narrow. Um, I think, yeah, that's the street Marie Stuart. We were talking about the street just before the video, thinking, should we tell them or not? <laughs> um, because some of the streets were renamed to be, let's say, a little bit more classier like, than they, they used to be. So Rue Marie Stuart was known for prostitution. Oh, yes. And um, should we tell them or not? Oh, yeah, the real go name? Ahead, go ahead. Okay, you so the to. real name of the street was Tir Boudin. So that was probably during the Middle Ages. So Tir Boudin, which means. Uh, uh, Boud 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 Boudin is a sausage, so <laughs> you think whatever you think <laughs> with that, but that used to be the name of it. And so now it's Marie Stuart, so yeah, better name, but it's bit also better. weird now to, uh, to have the, you know, rename after a queen, but anyway. Yeah, well apparently she really enjoyed this treat. Yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, but you know, so we're, we're gonna see. So this is the, the last place I wanted to take you to. This is the so Passage du Grand Serre. Uh, this is one of the passages of Paris. You know, it's those uh, little alleyways that were created in the beginning of the 19th century. This one dates from uh, 1825, if I remember correctly. And 
basically they were a safe way for the Parisians to do their shopping because obviously today you know you have sidewalks and everything but that was not always the case uh, it was actually quite dangerous to walk around Paris because there was no street light uh, until the end of the 19th century so that means you know that if you wanted to do your shopping you had to be careful that it was during the day that there was yeah, not too many we cars we about the, the thief and the, exactly. the fraud and so you had to be careful of all of that so okay so here it's more safe way to do shopping exactly yeah so as you can see here it's a little passageway so this one is called the passage of the great stag uh, it's because there used to be an hotel of the great stag uh, here and that's the reason why it's called that way um, today those are a little bit less famous as you can see it's not very crowded and I really enjoy them because they look absolutely beautiful uh, you have a lot of little stores in them if you want to find you know little thing that you can't find anywhere else I would say the passages are a good one Ooh, <laughs> we're making some new friends <laughs> So yeah. So in the in the passage, so you probably saw the video, but if you don't, so look for the video with the, with Bertrand and Florent uh, about the Palais Royal and about, about the passages, because um, there is a whole let's say a whole culture about mm -hmm. the about the passages. The fact that the merchants they usually at the time they were living in the passages. The fact that it's not considered a private place, but really a street, or it's a mix, let's say, of rules of the street. For example, I don't know if you like it or not, but the fact that people can smoke in the street, let's say they can smoke also in the passages. That's one of the rules uh, that is kind of specific. And, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, some people think, oh, but it's weird, it's private, but no, it's not. So there is this, um, this kind of in, in, in between let's say. Exactly. Um, in this one we don't see the the, um, the gas lamp but it mm -hmm. used to be also quite known uh, exactly. that in the passages you had lamp with fill of gas, oil uh, to just provide some, um, some, uh, yeah, some light into the passage. Now of course we have electricity so it's much better but for a long time it was uh, also um, the modernity of it. And now this passage is known for yeah, just nice little shop designers exactly. offices i saw a co-working place mm -hmm. so that's funny uh is there one place that you like in particular or so yeah yeah now you remember we're talking about les Halles, where i would say this is not a place where um i buy uh, a lot of things um here i prefer it it's a little bit more expensive of course but here you actually have artisans working so you can find different things uh i really like uh this sort of places you know because you have a lot of very interesting uh, shops. There is actually a shop that I like. It's a little uh, mercerie, you know, where you can buy things for sewing. Um, I really like it. It's actually right here. Um, they always have very beautiful fabric, very interesting patterns. Um, so yeah, and also if you like sewing like I do, you have very different thing. You can see a little bit of a selection of what they have. They have this beautiful Liberty um, fabric right here. And so yeah, this is the place where I like to come when I come to this passage. So yeah, it's called Lil Whistle. <laughs> and so we, so at the end of the passage, we are so we're getting uh, in another street that is very uh, uh, living. So maybe we're gonna uh, end our tour uh, over there. Mm -hmm. huh? And so yeah, so this. You say that this is much better than going to Leal because it's of course the big brand, uh, but it's also yeah you have also to find them the passages. Huh? Exactly. They are they are known as secret passages. So just look them on the, yeah on the map on the internet. You just go for the passages, or of course you can come with us uh, whenever you're in Paris. Um, but yeah, thank you so much uh, for for this tour, Lola. That was really cool. If you want to. Um, we're going to continue until uh, just the, the end of the passage, so we, you can see a little bit of Saint Denis Street, mm -hmm. uh, and there's another passage. So we could go on for you know a long time, but it has been already uh, uh, a little hour with you guys. So thank you so much. If you want to tip your guides, that would be the great moment. Um, there's a lot of uh, noise here. I hope you can uh, hear us. Yeah, perfect. Isn't that good? I love to be in the middle of the streets, you know, with no car. <laughs> so maybe just uh, for the end, uh, we're going to put off uh, our mask and say thank you so much for watching thank us. You. Thank you, Lola, for all your Merci. insights. Uh, of course, whenever you come in Paris, we can do food tours and longer ones for three hours, four hours, <laughs> uh, and even cooking classes. You could do that in Paris. So that's pretty fun. But thank you so much for today. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask them on the chat and please share the video. I think next week we're going to try to go on the Eiffel Tower. So maybe we see each other next week as well bye guys thank bye. you so much thank you, thank you. bye <laughs>